<laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. It is another day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a pleasure, beloved, to greet you with the love of Jesus Christ. Listen, it's Fifth Sunday, and I know you're saddened that we are not in the building, but we still got a word from the Lord. Listen, I hope that you are fellowshipping with your family, that you are just enjoying your day and enjoying what God has made. Check this message out. It's called Run. God bless you. Place for all people. Place for all people. Lord, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. While you're still standing, let us go to the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. We're going back to the book of Habakkuk. Amen. I want to point out to you this morning something in the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. vision and make it plain upon the tables that he whoever is reading it may run that readeth amen. Amen. amen father we thank you god we give you glory and the honor for you just been an awesome god you've been mighty in all of your ways and so god we bring our attention now to your word God, we remove and ask you to remove and help us to remove any and all distractions that may be in our minds. God, anything that we're thinking about, about tomorrow, anything we're thinking about, about what we're going to eat. God, we focus our attention now on your word. God, we ask you to speak, Lord. Speak to the broken heart. Speak to the wounded soul. Speak to the hung down head. God, speak to us right now in Jesus' name. We ask now these blessings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We do pray. And the people of God said amen. Amen. And amen. Before you take your seats, just look at somebody and say, run. Run. Come on, put your seat back. Come on, you ought, to, you ought to get excited about that. I know you may not understand it right now, but look at somebody else and tell them, run. Run! Run! Hallelujah. You may take your seats in the sanctuary. Glory be to God. Run. 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 Is it ready over there, y'all? Run. 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 Hallelujah. Beloved, we, we talked about last Sunday, we talked from the sermon title, and I can see clearly now. That the rain is going, I can see. Um, when we talked about vision, we talked about seeing. We talked about seeing ourselves the way God sees us. Amen. Seeing the things from God's perspective and not necessarily our own. For we understand, beloved, that sometimes our perspective of things can be wrong, can be quite well the opposite of what God is saying and what God is doing. Amen. And so we talked about that last week. And now, beloved, that some of you all can see clearly now. Amen. <laughs> I said, now that some of you all can see better now, can see clearer now, I want to tell you this morning to run. Amen. Tell you to run. Amen. Well, Bishop, what are you talking about running? What do you what do you mean running? When we look at this particular text, as we talked about on Wednesday night in Bible study, for those of you who watched it, and if you didn't watch it, it's okay, you can go back and watch it, amen, or go back and listen to it. We talked about how this particular text has been mentioned and said out of context so much. I'm not, I'm 
not exempt from that because when I read it, you know, take the first couple of times, uh, you know, I thought that God was saying for us to write our vision. <laughs> and you notice we use this text when we talk about goals and when we talk about, you know, the vision board. And y'all know, we, we, y'all heard preachers say this before, write the vision and make it plain that you'll run with it and not faint. We talk about it from that perspective. Uh -huh. However, that's not what the text is talking about. Jesus. <laughs> it's important. The Bible says, and all I get is get an understanding. If you're going to get an understanding, make sure you get the right understanding. Can the church say amen? amen? Amen. So I can't tell you how many times I've preached it, I've heard it mm -hmm. given out of context. But, but beloved, I want to. Make sure that you understand what here God is saying and what Habakkuk is talking about in this text. So let us, beloved, examine it a little further for ourselves. Amen. First of all, beloved, the vision spoken about here immediately follows the verse. God says to write the vision and make it plain. But what is the vision? He immediately talks about what the vision is that he wants Habakkuk to write. It's not about a vision of prosperity. It's not about a vision of wealth and all this other stuff. But God is telling them that this is the vision. There is some terror that is about to come your way. There is some destruction that is about to happen in the earth. And I need you to be prepared. This, beloved, this text is not for everybody. Everybody is not going to get it. The Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear. And then they lay it down in the text, verse 4. He says that, he, said, he tells them that the just shall live by faith. This right here, beloved, is for the just. Amen. This right here is for the just. And I'm going to help you today to understand what God is saying here because this is not a mandate to write a blank check for the so-called modern day name it, claim it, uh, uh, receive it, and believe it and receive it. This right here is not that text. Amen. You hear me this morning? This right here is not the text for right the vision. Write what you want and watch God do it. Write what, you, what you're asking him for and watch God make it come to truth. All of that is good, but this right here, I need you to understand that this text right here is not that. Amen. Okay? This right here is not that. Alright? God gave a vision. God told Habakkuk to write the vision. And he tells him in, in the text of verse in chapter 2 and also in chapter 1 he begins to tell him what is going on. What he's about to do. He's about to destroy uh, 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 some people in, in, in Judah by way of Babylon. Babylon was one of those 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 ratchet. They were the ratchet. They were the they were the most wicked people on the earth. And God was about to destroy Judea. Judea was one of God's holy places. But this is what gets us in trouble. It is not the fact always that God is trying us to teach us a lesson or that God is trying to do something bad. We, beloved, cause a, 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 a lot of the things that come upon ourselves because of our disobedience. Judah was disobedient in what God was saying and there was nobody to blame for it but them. See, sometimes we want to get in trouble. Like the kids, I know my daughter, you know, she when she gets in trouble, she always want to say, oh, I didn't know. Oh, 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 oh. It was them. She can't say it. She can't blame it on her, 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 her classmates or anybody else now because she ain't got no classmates. She's homeschooled, right? And so there's nobody to blame but her. These people, we always want to blame it on other people. But it was because of their own sin. It was because of their own turning away from God and doing what they wanted to do that God planted judgment upon them. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. Judah. Yes. God's people. Uh -huh. It ain't always the wicked causing the chaos right. that God says I got to do something. It's the just people. It's the people who call on the Lord. It's the people who shout and who speak in tongues who always talk about and rolling on the floor that He 
brings about correction. Because for us, the wicked going to be the wicked. They going to do their thing. They going to be the sinner and they going to be just the sinner, right? They know they sinning and guess what? They ain't no shame in that game. Hello? But it's us who claim we hold it. Us who claim we save and sanctify and fill with the Holy Ghost in front of people. But behind the scenes we are a hot mess and we just do our own thing and we just making God look bad. It's sin. So God had to bring judgment upon Judea by the way of Babylon. So God, she gives that 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 illustration. He gives that vision to Habakkuk. Habakkuk is just like, oh my God, why, Lord, what what do you mean? Are you serious? Like, I know you are just God, but why you got to do it this way? Can't you do it another way, Lord? God tells Habakkuk to. Him. Write that vision. And he tells him to make it plain. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. The Hebrew of this word, make it plain, mm -hmm. that phrase right there, means to explain. Uh -huh. I need you to give law. Yes. Uh -huh. I need you to give instruction. Yes. And then he tells them to write it on the tablets. You got to understand why he says write it on the tablets. But look, back in that day when they wrote things on tablets, it was generally for the public display. Right, tablets. They only that's all they had. They didn't have the ink and the paper and the notepad like we got. They had tablets. So, so Habakkuk had to actually carve it on a stone and put it up for everybody to see. The Bible says that they may run and not faint. He, in other words, he he wasn't talking about a uh, Herod actually going around and telling you better get right or you're going to hell. Y'all see them people that stand on the corner who are always talking about going to hell and you better get right and you. It's going to be condemn condemnation and all that other stuff. He wasn't talking about them, but he was actually talking about the person who read it that they ought to run with what they read. Y'all yeah. yeah, understand me this morning? Huh? Yeah, you understand me? Huh? He was telling them to you ought to run when you read this word. Yeah. yeah. Run when you read this word. In other words, he wanted him to write the vision so plain. That anybody who read that vision would run, not in terror, but run to save their life. Amen. Amen. Let me help you here. Not run in terror, but run to save your life. See, God does not give, put us out there and, and send us straight to hell. He gives us a way of escape. Hello? He gives us a way of escape. He, he gives us a way out. But most times we're so stubborn that we don't take the way out. We don't hear what God says. We, we just continue to do our own thing and think we're invisible. Think that God don't see us when God sees everything and he knows everything. The pastor may not see everything, but God who sits high and he looks low, he sees everything. He tells them that they may run, not in terror, but run to get yourself right. Get your life right. <laughs> Right. Uh, you, you've been sinning and you've been doing all of this and this is why I'm sending the destruction this is why I'm sending Babylon to get rid of some stuff and, and to destroy some things but those of you who still want to listen to me this is your way of escape you see in another text where God talks about you know the righteous the just will live by faith the Bible says that he says that if you call upon me, I will answer. Uh -huh. He answers them, but he tells them to turn from their wicked ways. Amen. Huh? Amen. He said that my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Amen. He is trying to tell Judah in this vision that he had a back to write on the tablet and place them in a public view. He said that if you are my people and if you are really called by then guess what? You will humble yourself, turn from your wicked ways, and then I'll save you. Yes, 
telling the people of Judah, those that want to hear. Because uh -huh. you know sometimes we don't want to hear right. what God has to say. Amen. That's true. Come on, let's be honest. Amen. We, we want to hear it all the time. Amen. Amen. It's like that kid who don't want to hear their mama fussing. Hello? Amen. Uh, they tune them out. <laughs> my mama said, my mama used to tell me when they want in and That's go right. off the other. That's right. He said, but for those who will hear me today, uh -huh. I'm telling you to get right. Amen. To run Jesus. to what's right. Amen. Amen. Here it is, beloved. The word run. And the Hebrew has a range of meanings. It means to either cause to run up, to lead to the hasty, to bring quickly, or to cause to hasten. Can I tell you, beloved, that I know y'all been here for a long time, that you better get right, because the times of the signs is here. And the Lord, and you, we've been hearing that a long time, ain't it, Tate? Uh, you better get right. You've you been hearing that a long time, man. You go to church and people say, oh, it's the signs of the time. God is coming soon. And here it is now, over 40 some years, I've been hearing that. And God ain't came yet. However, he has come, but he hasn't come for me yet. Yes, Hello? Amen. Amen. Hello? Amen. Huh? Mm -hmm. And so here it is. He says to run, to make haste, get in a hurry. The verse properly explained is telling Habakkuk to write the vision on tables, hear me carefully, and put it in the public square, make it understandable so that the one who reads it may run away from or escape the judgment that is being revealed. Amen. Yeah, yeah. In other words, God is telling you to get your house in order. Amen. God is telling you to get right. You don't know when I'm coming. That's right. Amen. You don't need to know because if you stay ready, you won't have to get ready. That's right. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. He's telling us to get in a haste. Yes, yes. To get in a haste. Get, get in a haste. Get in a hurry. We don't have time to be playing around and to be playing church. We are the church. It's not the building. It's the people. Present your body a living sacrifice. You yourself, you are the sacrifice. You are the living being. You are the church. Not the building. We just gather here to gather strength. Mm -hmm. To see our each other lovely faces and, and go out and do what God tells us to do. Because guess what, beloved? Us living is not in here. Amen. Because uh, yes. in here we can do we can do it good now. Amen. But the real test comes when we get outside the door and the devil stop tripping. Amen. Amen. The real test is when we get outside the door and people start acting ugly. Hello. The real test is when, when we gotta pay a bill and we don't know how we're gonna pay a bill. Oh, the real test yes. not in the church. We happy in the church. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but it's when we get outside the door. We have to fight. Jesus, Jesus. Must be ready to fight. Jesus, Jesus. Must run. Save ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. God showed him back a vision. Mm -hmm. Destruction. Quite horrifying. If you read the text in Rebecca 1, chapter 1, verse 2, chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3, is broken up into different things. Rebecca. He's first of all, he's he's making a complaint. We always complain. <laughs> Habakkuk was making a complaint. He was pleading. <laughs> he was he was lamentating. In other words, he was he was whining, Lord, why? I know you love us, but why are you gonna do this to us? Jesus. Jesus. Chapter two, God begins to talk to Habakkuk and tell Habakkuk what he needs to write. He doesn't say, I'm not going to do it. No, I'm gonna do it. But I need you to prepare the people. Of God, who still are the just. Amen. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And so here it is. Mm -hmm. He gives him a vision of terror, destruction, yeah. punishment. Exactly. And God turns around in verse 4. Mm -hmm. This is what I like. Mm -hmm. Because God, he sets a plan. Ain't nobody did it but Bill. Huh? <laughs> hey, we can't blame nobody but ourselves sometimes, huh? Amen. 
And so he sets a plan, but he says, this is what I'm also going to do. I'm going to provide a way of escape for those people who are the just. I'm not going to kill everybody. I'm not going to destroy everything. But those who are the just, they will hear what I am saying and they will run. He says in verse 4, he says that, Behold, my soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. He says, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> they ain't right. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> they ain't doing what I asked. And they my people. But, you ain't living right. But, you sin and you can't show. But, God always has an introduction in there. The but. I heard somebody say this morning, but God. The way of escape. He says, but the just Jesus. shall live yeah. by his faith. Not Amen. God's faith, but by your faith. Can I talk to you real quick? I'm about done. Amen. I'm about done. I'm about done. Beloved, here it is. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to be done when I get done. All right. <laughs> Sometimes, beloved, we look around and we see what is all going on. And we think, how many of y'all have said that just the last two years, just the last week? We were like, Lord, what is going on? Amen. Lord, why? You know, why would a just God, and that's just it, God is just. He reigns on the just and the unjust. Amen. Huh? Why would a God who loves us so cause things to happen like this? Why would he allow it to happen? Wait, beloved. Let me ask you this. Are you or are you not the just? Scripture says the just. I need y'all to highlight that. The just shall live by faith. Huh? In verse 4 of Carl's B, I need you to highlight that. The just shall live by faith. Let's talk about that for a minute. Have you not been justified? Are you not the just of God? The called of God, the just. The sanctified of God, the just. I've been through some things, but God has preserved me even in the midst of the stuff. The just. Those who really try to do what is right. The just. Those who, who treat others right, no matter how others treat them. The just. Those who rely on the word of God, even when stuff don't look right. The just. Are you not the just this morning? Amen. Amen. Let me talk to the just. Come here, just people. The just. See, what we fail to realize sometimes is that as the just, he that, he, as the just, God, he says that I have to, I have to, the wheat, that you have to understand the scripture in Matthew when it talks about the wheat grows with the tear, huh? Uh, the wheat grows with the tear. And a lot of times what God is trying to do when things happen and things are going on like it is now, he is trying to now separate the wheat from the tear. The wheat and the tear grow up. In other words, the just, he reigns on the just and the unjust. Everybody will experience trouble. Everybody will experience heartache. Everybody will have to grow through what everybody else is going through. But at the end of the day, God will start to separate those who are weak from those who are strong. Those who know him and those who perpetrate him. Those who call on him and he really acts from those who he's asked apart from me and I don't know you. Here is the point. We the people of God, we get too caught up in the why us or the destruction that we see. We the Stop! 
separate us from those individuals who think they know him but don't know nothing about him. Amen. First and foremost, in the separating, we got to let our faith build up some stuff. We got to run. When we run, beloved, hear me, we're not running away from God, but we're running to God. And in the midst of us running to God, when we get to God and we get all that we need, then we start running with God. Don't you leave unless you got to take the Lord with you. Grandmama say, everywhere I go, I got to take the Lord with me. I can't run this race by myself. But God, I need your help. Anybody else today can say, I need the help of the Lord. When you start running, don't run away from God. Run Run to him. Amen. Make sure you run with him. Amen. That's my first point. Yes. Make sure you run to him. Yes. Then you make sure you run with him. Yes. Uh, Paul said it like this. He told Timothy in the letter. Well, Y'all gotta know we be reading people's mail. Uh -huh. uh. <laughs> We be reading people's mail, you know what I'm talking about? We be reading people's mail and we'll just say, God said it. God ain't said that. That was Paul's letter to Timothy. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. Jesus, Jesus. So here it is that Paul writes to Timothy. He tells Timothy not to neglect the spiritual gifts that are with him. But love it, God, when he, we get to God, God gives us what we need in order to move on. Amen. Hello? He gives us spiritual gifts and he places us and strengthens us. But along the way, even with the spiritual gifts, we're going to still need God's help. So even though you've been gifted, hello somebody, even though you are talented, even though you got the gift of the Holy Ghost to speaking in the tongues if you got it, you got the laying on of the hands, you got the prophesying, don't be proper lying, you got all of these gifts, but make sure that you continue God with you when you're using the gifts. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. Good God Almighty. Jesus. This is why yes, yes. we run to God. Jesus. And then after we run to him, uh -huh. he fills us, mm -hmm. but also take him with you. Amen. Huh? Yes, yes. Second thing is that when we run to God and we run to him, mm -hmm. we must trust our faith. God gives each of us a measure of faith. Hello, and some of our faiths are different than others, but he gives to us all a measure of faith. And beloved, wherever you are in your faith, trust your faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on here, somebody. Trust Amen. your faith. The word of God states in Luke chapter 22, verses 31 through 30. Four, it says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, before Satan had, behold, Satan had desire to have you, that ye may, he may sip you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee. The Lord himself prayed for Simon. And he said, Simon, I prayed for you that your faith fell of you not. In other words, Jesus was saying to Simon, Simon, listen, the road is going to get a little tough. Yeah. The way is going to get a little shady and sassy. And people you thought was going to be your friend was going to be your boy. Jude is going to be right there in the camp with you. But what I have taught you, what I have given to you, trust what I have told to you. Somebody in here needs to trust their faith. I know it looks bad. I know it doesn't feel good. But you got to understand and hold on to what you know. Hold on to what you believe. Come on, Zare. Because I'm getting tired now. I'm almost done. I ain't going to be up here long. I got one more point, but I got to give you this. You got to hold on to what you believe. Don't look at a situation and doubt it. You got to remember and wreck your life. If he did it before, he is
come in a little, little slower. Huh? If you trust him. You'll run to him. Mm-hmm. You'll run with him. Amen. And then you'll trust what you know. That's right. That you know. Amen. Some of us we doubt what we know. Right. Huh? Right. We doubt ourselves too often, huh? We doubt what God has has showed us too often, huh? We doubt where God has brought us from. And we let the devil get in and creep in. Uh, God, that God is not able to do it now when he did it before. But but you just gotta trust God. If your faith is down on the inside, you believe and you you, you know without a shadow of a doubt the God that you serve. Trust your faith. Look at somebody and say, trust your faith. Trust your faith. Don't trust man. That's right. Amen. But trust your Faith thoroughly, but not not last, not least. Amen. Leave. Amen. Amen. Come on, Zuri, come in with me slowly. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, tell you, I'll let you know when you hit it. Uh, here it is, beloved, is that you gotta your first thing and all foremost is that you gotta walk with the Lord. Amen. Uh, Amen. You gotta run to him and then you gotta run with him, huh? Because understand the road is gonna get a little tough. Huh? The way you come is gonna be a little heavy. But God promised never to leave us, nor will he forsake us. And the second part of my message today is you gotta trust your faith in knowing that the same God who brought you there yesterday is the same God that's gonna keep you there tomorrow. You gotta trust that you know what you know. And you really know, you know God is able to keep you. And then in the midst of you trusting him, God wants you to live. Look at your neighbor and say, leave. You're going to live to see all that God has promised you. I know the destruction is before you, but you got to know that God, God is with you. And you just continue to leave.
have to stop learning that some of the same people who scandalize your name and tell you what you ought to be doing, they turn them around and live in their life. Despite what you think, despite how you feel, but you over there depressed, you over there sad, you over there about to take your life because you worried about them.
Again, beloved, I hope that you've enjoyed that message. Run, 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 run. It's time for us to get to work and run. You hear me? Run. Listen, I know tomorrow uh, you start their um, school year. And so we want to say a prayer for them. We want to say a prayer for you. We want to tell you that God loves you. He cares so much about you. He is concerned about you. You heard me? Let's pray. Father, we just want to tell you thank you for this day that you've made. And God, we ask you to bless our children. God, bless those who are going back to school, oh God, for this school year. God, we ask you a blessing upon them. You cover them and protect them. Let no hurt, harm or danger come upon them. God, thank you, oh God, for the wisdom and knowledge that you're giving to them, oh God, so that they can excel and do good in school. God, we ask you to keep them and cover them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Listen, beloved. I hope that you all, again, is having a great day. Please remember, sow your tithes, sow your offering. Cash App information has already been given to you. However, again, it is dollar sign V-I-C-U-C-10. Again, V-I-C-U-C-1-0. All right? You can also do PayPal. PayPal is V-I-C-U-C as well. Listen, have a blessed day. We love you all. There is nothing that you can do about it. Join us Sunday, Sunday. Guess what? Sunday, 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 Sunday. I can't wait to see you in the building. First Sunday in August, we are having our communion. You are welcome to join us. Come as you are. 
beloved, because we are the church for all God's people. God is more concerned about your heart than what you have on. May the Lord watch between me and you thee while we're absent one from another. It's in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Amen.